What's going on my exotic family? Welcome back to another video. So today's video we're going to be answering questions from non-reptile keepers. I posted a question on my Facebook a couple of days ago and I asked family, friends, and non-reptile keepers ask me anything reptile related and I'll do my best to answer it on my next YouTube video. So that's what we're going to be doing today so stay tuned. <laughs> Alrighty, everybody welcome back to the video um, so we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it I got my notebook full of questions here um, for those of you watching um, that asked a question if you don't hear a question in this video do not be alarmed it will be in the next video I split it up because there were so many questions and I didn't want this video to be super long um, so I got eight questions here and I can do the rest in another video so let's jump right to it so the first question do snakes have to be fed live and what can you do to make the mouse seem like it's alive? Um, so the, to answer that question, it's yes and no. Um, yes, um, simply because some snakes generally will not take frozen no matter what you do. Um, those of us that have multiple snakes, um, we've all either dealt with it or still are still you know are dealing with it. Um, we all deal with that one snake that does not want to convert over to frozen no matter what you do. Um, no, because you know, for the most part, most snakes will kind of convert over, um, not all. Um, and to me, it's you know, personal preference. I feel like it's just a bit safer. Um, once a snake gets a certain size, um, obviously the food grows with it. Um, so take for instance, my six foot boa, boa Luther, he's eating jumbo rats. A jumbo rat can do some pretty severe damage um, if they, you know, get that one position and they bite the snake back. Yes, the snake may still eat the rat, but then you have a snake that may uh, may have an infection and it's just it's just not fun to deal with. Um, and then some people prefer to feed live and there's nothing wrong with that. Like I said, me, my personal preference is to feed frozen. Um, however, it just kind of depends on the snake. Um, some will take the frozen, some won't. As far as feeding frozen, things you can do to make the um, mouse seem alive is, um, I know at least for me, I usually just kind of um, take tongs and just kind of wave it around the snake um, and usually they'll strike at their leisure or whenever they're ready. Um, and that seems to work well for me. I don't have any issues. Um, some people will just kind of, you know, obviously if they're frozen, you have to warm up the mouse, uh, get them to, you know, a decent temperature that the snake is interested. And then some people will lay it in the enclosure and the snake will get it that way. Um, so like I said, there's a few tips and tricks you can do. Um, it depends on the person as well as it depends on the snake. Question number two, what is a great reptile for kids? Um, so if we're talking reptiles that are great for kids, there's gonna be a few things that we should consider um, before thinking which reptile to get. Um, number one um, is gonna be what type of reptile are we looking for? Are we looking for a lizard? Are we looking for a snake? Um, are we looking for something that's low maintenance? Are we looking for something that doesn't need to be handled or you don't have to handle? Um, and then, you know, one of the biggest factors is what is the age of the kid that we're getting the animal for? Um, so I wouldn't say go out and get a ball python or a leopard gecko for a kid that's like two or three. Um, some people do that and, you know, to each their own. That's just not something I would recommend because at that point, you know, I feel like a two year old child doesn't really get too much enjoyment out of that. It just becomes the parent's pet at that point, um, which is fine. Um, but if we're talking for kids, um, like I said, depending on if you're looking for something that is low maintenance and it's not super expensive and you don't have to really handle um, as much, I would say a leopard gecko, um, if we're talking lizards. Um, really great pets, um, great animals. The downside to them that a lot of people don't like is that they are insectivores, so they eat nothing but bugs. Um, another lizard it's more of an intermediate to advanced lizard and probably something i would recommend for like a little bit of an older kid so maybe like a 10 12 11 13 year old whatever i'll um, be a bearded dragon uh, bearded dragons are great animals um they don't mind being handled um and they eat a plethora of things um now i will say bearded dragons are going to be a little more expensive compared to a leopard gecko um now if we're talking snakes um i would recommend um, something like a uh, corn snake or a uh, ball python for that matter. Um, so the corn snake is going to be, you know, your more low maintenance, um, doesn't really get huge, um, you know, pretty laid back snake for the most part. 
um, versus your ball python. They're pretty laid back for the most part, but I'm gonna say they're a little more advanced because you have to deal with, you know, when they go into season and they're ready to breed, ready to breed. It's like Baku, my ball python, um, he has been off food for probably like two months now. Um, but they're gonna be a little more expensive than versus a corn snake. So there's just a few factors that play um, a huge role in decision making when it comes to deciding on a reptile for kids um, and in general um, then always I would add on to that is uh, do research um, so decide on the animal get everything you need for it before you even get everything you need for it decide on the animal and research everything you possibly can about that animal um, use multiple sources that way you can reference information um, and then as well as um, another useful tool that we all use in the reptile community is talk to people that have owned these animals that have bred these animals that have worked with these animals um, that'll give you a really good um, kind of I guess preview of what to expect when you get that animal Hope that answered your question. Sorry I was so long and drawn out. All right, so question number three is how do you sex a reptile? Um, so this is another one of those questions where it depends on what reptile we're talking about. Um, so if we're talking snakes, there's a couple different ways. You know, ball pythons, uh, most breeders or people um, will just kind of go to the base of the tail um, and just kind of flip it up. And if you get um, something that pops up and out, which is a hemipenes, that's the male. And if nothing comes out, that's the female versus some of um, some of your other snakes, um, you know, green tree pythons and everything of that nature. Um, some people will probe and that's where they take this um, long slender tube like thing and they stick it in the end of a snake or their vent um, and they feel around um, for what they need to look for. And um, it can be determined that way. So once again, it kind of depends on the animal. Um, but there are a few different ways and methods to sex different animals. Question number four, are all snakes venomous? Um, the answer to that question is no. Um, I have 12 snakes, um, none of mine are venomous. I have mostly constrictors, um, so pythons and boas, um, as well as two um, colubrids, which is just a smaller group of snakes. Um, these snakes, for the most part, um, stay smaller than most pythons and boas. Um, not all of them, um, but most of them are going to stay pretty small. So king snakes, uh, milk snakes, um, garter snakes, corn snakes, those are colubrids. Um, so not all snakes are venomous. Um, venomous snakes are going to bite and um, kill their prey using venom, whereas constrictors are going to bite and constrict, waiting for their venom to um, die from suffocation. Alrighty, so this next question is interesting because um, this is another controversial topic in the reptile community. Um, and the question is, do reptiles get bored? Um, and if so, how can you stimulate them? Um, I'm going to say no, they don't get bored. However, they do need enrichment. Um, enrichment is simple things that they would do in the wild, climbing, um, hides, basically things that they can do for exercise. Um, so climbing, plants, you know, branches, logs, anything you can do to decorate their enclosure to you know, keep them as normal as possible, I guess. Um, which, like I said, is controversial um, because a lot of breeders usually they use racks um, and I use racks. Uh, my racks are decorated. Um, however, they just usually use racks, have a water bowl and maybe a hide. Um, so a lot of people don't like that because they lack enrichment, um, which they feel that particular snake or a reptile um, is being deprived of a good life. So. Um, a good way to do that is decorating the enclosure depending on what reptile we're talking about. If you have an arboreal snake, then make sure that snake has things to climb on. If you have a terrestrial snake, make sure that snake has plenty of hides and things to go under and dig under. Okay, so this next question is interesting. I've never heard this one before, but we'll go, we'll go ahead and answer it. Um, is it true snakes can't climb stairs? Um, definitely not true. Um, snakes have hundreds of muscles. Um, snakes can climb walls. Um, so it's definitely, definitely not true that they can't climb stairs. There's plenty of videos out there um, of snakes climbing stairs. If I can find one, I'll post one in the video. Um, but snakes definitely can climb stairs. Um, I don't think I've seen much of anything that snakes won't try to climb. So yeah, they can definitely climb, climb stairs. Question number seven, why a reptile? Um, I think for me, um, I, I wanted a reptile because there's something that's, they're interesting. Um, they're not a typical pet. Um, you know, I kind of pride myself in standing out. Um, and it's funny because this question actually comes from my sister. So 
she of all people knows how um, that's kind of you know my mantra um, even growing up I, I didn't like to stand in with that. I was quiet um, but I kind of always wanted to do my own thing so I feel like you know everybody wanted the dog everybody wanted the fish tanks and I had both of those but I wanted to take it up a notch um, and get into something that most people are afraid of um, just because I know that I can show people that these animals are misunderstood and they're really nothing to be scared of. Um, watching TV is one thing you you can't really learn from TV. Interacting um, with these animals is is something that I really pride. You know, it's it's just a, it's it's enjoyable. It's it's something that's fun and the fact that we have a community where it's thriving and growing and a lot of people are into the same thing makes it even better because it, you don't feel alone I guess you can say um, I mean even then uh, like I've explained in other videos I still get looks where people are looking at me like ill you have snakes you know and you know I get the, the, the stereotypes black people don't have snakes black people don't do this y'all can do what y'all want to do and I'm gonna do what I want to do I have 12 snakes um, I have five lizards and I have a tarantula so um, if you would like to be scared and misinformed, that is totally up to you. But like I said, um, education um, plays a key in everything. There's things that I don't particularly dwell on, but that's because I don't know about them. But I'm not really afraid to learn about them. And I also don't go off of what someone else says. I try to experience things on my own. So um, for me, um, I like the reptiles because it represents something different. Um, and you know keep it interesting they're not a typical pet um and there's just a variety of animals that you can get okay and question number eight how often do snakes need to be fed um so that question um is another one of those questions where it varies um so that's going to depend on the size of your snake the age of your snake um and what type of snake um so i have all of my snakes are on all different feeding schedules i have snakes that eat once a week, I have snakes to eat twice a week, and I have snakes to eat three times a week. I have snakes to eat, you know, once a month. So um, it really just depends on the type of snake, the size of the snake, and the age of the snake. Um, nonetheless, um, I get this question every day. They do not eat every day. Um, so it's usually on a weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly basis. Um, so... All right, everybody, that sums up uh, some of our non-reptile um, questions. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have more questions, please drop them below. Hit me up on Instagram at DW Exotics. Um, make sure you hit that notification bell. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. As always, stay exotic.